My mother was a very artistic person. She dedicated her life to her art. She was a rather eccentric painter. She had the idea of having four children and naming us in order to spell out L-O-V-E with our first initials. She passed unexpectedly last year, leaving me and my two siblings. She never got to complete the word love. When I was younger, I asked her, what happens if you get too old and can't have a baby anymore? Or something along those lines. And she told me that one of us could have a baby and finish it for her. She said it wouldn't be the same, but the tribute would make me happy. My parents had marital problems up till her death because of my father's infidelity. I think she put off having the fourth child for quite some time because of it. However, she always said baby Elise or Emilio would be completing our family soon. I was around six or seven months pregnant when my father and his wife and former mistress announced their pregnancy. She said she would finally bring little Emilio into our family. My sister and I were horrified and spoke to my dad privately that while my mom did want someone to continue on the acronym idea, we found it disrespectful to do it with the woman he was cheating on her with. I then told him about how she said she wanted one of us to carry on the name when I was a child. He shut me down, saying that she probably expected her and me to still be together, and that it'll be better with all of you guys in the same generation of the family, and left it at that. My brother agreed. Two weeks before I gave birth, they found out they were not having a boy as they hoped, but a girl. I realized I could take the name Elise before they would have a chance to name their baby my mother's chosen name. They could name her Emily or something else, but it wouldn't be the name my mother chose, and that's what mattered to me. So I did. My father, and especially my stepmother, are furious at me for ruining my mother's lasting wishes and tarnishing her idea. While my sister agrees with me, she won't say it to my dad since the birth. My aunt and other family on my dad's side call me names from petty and troublemaking to just outright a witch. I didn't expect so much backlash, and it's really stressing me out with just giving birth, and they're taunting me by posting pictures of their ultrasounds with captions like, The E-Baby is coming, and Three's a crowd, but four is love. It's driving me crazy, and it feels like this rift in the family is all for nothing, since they're going to claim their baby is the real E-Baby anyways. I forgot to add this in, but my stepmom approached me, asked me for permission, and politely asked me to change my mind about the baby's name once she caught wind that I was already planning on naming the baby Elise. This is part of why I think I could be the idiot. I never actually officially announced the name first. I felt like it would be more special naming the baby when they arrived, not before. Not the idiot. So weird your dad thinks it's even remotely appropriate to name a child of his mistress to honor his late wife. Tell stepmom to pick an R name and honor her own relationship. Love R, because she's the other lover. Burn. Her next gig could be Cecilia, Ursula, Natalie, Tina. I can't understand how the stepmom is going along with it. If I was in that situation and my husband told me he wanted us to name our child after the legacy of his late wife, I'd be a bit shocked, even without any cheating. At this point, I would lean into the pettiness since you're already being called out for it, and put him and the mistress on blast for the world to see. To take the idea my mother came up with that she wanted her children to carry out, I mean, aren't you tired? You lack such originality you have to steal from a dead woman. Wasn't sleeping with her husband enough for you? I mean, I cannot wait to tell my new half-sibling the origin of her name and about the deceased woman who started the tradition and the mistress who slept with the woman's husband and still wasn't satisfied. That'll burn like napalm. It might burn a bridge as well, though, if that matters at this point. The baby won't be a sibling you grow up with, in addition to having no connection to your mother. Your father is trying to use your mother's dream to force you to have a bond with your half-sibling that likely won't happen because you will be too focused on raising your own child. Don't let him foist your step-sibling on you to babysit under some guise of developing sibling bonds. Honey, your baby is the real e-baby and always will be. You know that, your sister knows that, and I bet your mom knows that. The other night, I went on a super awkward double date and wanted a second opinion. I'm 27 female, friends with Amy, 29 female. Our husbands get along okay, but aren't really friends. Amy recently complained to me about how her husband spends all their excess spending money on DoorDash at work. She's tried talking to him about it, and he says he'll stop, and he does for a week and starts back up. Amy makes about 60000 a year, and her husband makes about 35000 a year. So he's essentially blowing money that mostly she's making on takeout because he's too lazy to pack a sandwich. 
Amy asked me if I have any issues with my husband wasting money on stuff like that. I explained to Amy that my husband and I have always had separate finances. I make about 120,000 a year and he makes about 100,000. We split our utilities, mortgage and stuff 50-50 and we take turns paying for dates and groceries. We don't nickel and dime each other, but anything extra comes from our money, like clothes, video games, etc. I don't really involve myself in his finances, not that I'd need to. He's a grown man and all. I didn't push her to do the same, I just answered her questions honestly. I explain why I'm happy doing this arrangement that works for us. Amy, on her own, confronted her husband that she was tired of not listening to her and she got her own bank account and told him that their finances would be separate from now on. He was furious, but she stood her ground and there was nothing he could do, really. We went on a double date last night and it was awkward. He only got a side salad because it was his turn to pay, apparently. Then he went off on everyone present about how he's glad everyone's happy but him. It was super uncomfortable and I don't entirely understand why a 30-year-old man expects his wife to foot his expensive lifestyle. He said that it was my fault for influencing his wife into doing something stupid, so I guess this conflict is between me and him. Am I the idiot for indirectly influencing my friend and making her husband unhappy? Not the idiot, and he is. Seriously, he was leeching off of her. All you did was tell your friend how you manage expenses with your husband. Her using the same advice has nothing to do with you. The fact that he's now taking out on all of you proves that he needs to act like an adult and realize that not everything is a free ride. Good luck to Amy. The way things are going, I suspect she'll be looking for a divorce lawyer soon. He's mad you ruined his gravy train. His reaction is very telling. He wouldn't be so furious if he wasn't well aware he couldn't spend money the way he did if his wife didn't make it. If it upsets him, he should earn more money. Who wants to bet he'd be mad as heck if she spent that much money on stuff that isn't needed, even though it's literally her money, her choice? If she was spending it all, which she could be, it's hers. He wouldn't be able to blow it on takeout either. Good on your friend for immediately taking your advice. It could have gotten way out of hand. I, 25 female, am getting married in May of next year. I'm currently planning the reception and I've already secured a venue. I was having a discussion with my fiancé, 27 female, about possible food options, catering or cooking, what types of food, buffet style or served, etc. And my mother, 60 female, and one of my aunts, 56, were visiting. They threw in some thoughts and advice as they've had weddings, which I really appreciate. The topic of drinking came up and my aunt asked what kind of cocktails we'd be serving. I told her we wouldn't be serving alcohol at the wedding. She was shocked and asked what everyone was going to drink. I told her water, sweet tea, lemonade, fruit punch and soda would be available. My aunt said soda was a bad idea because it's so unhealthy and so is sweet tea and overly sugary lemonade and fruit punch. I told her if she was so concerned about sugar content, she could stick with water. And we plan on having plenty of fresh fruit to add to it. We'd also have unsweetened tea for my diabetic family members or they're welcome to request to bring some desirable alternative. She asked why alcohol couldn't be a request. I told her I simply didn't want to serve any at my wedding. My fiancé and I would be financially responsible for the purchase, and alcohol would frankly be out of our budget, and we would feel responsible for their actions. She asked if she and the other drinkers of the family could bring their own beer and said it really wouldn't be a party without one. I said no again because it was my wedding and fiancé, and I would feel responsible for guests drinking. We also want to have a fun and happy wedding because everyone there loves each other, and is happy to celebrate their family and our union. She said it was already a shame I wasn't getting married in a church, and the least I could do was make up for it with a good reception. I told her if she couldn't go one evening without drinking, then maybe she was the one with the problem. At this point, my mom jumped in and told me I needed to apologize. I said no, I didn't appreciate how my aunt had spoken to me, and she needed to leave. They ended up going, but then my aunt complained the next day on Facebook about my dry wedding, and said she wasn't going to torture herself driving an hour and a half to my venue just to have a bad time. She also explained how the conversation went the day before and said I called her a drunk for being healthy. I've been getting a lot of messages, some supportive, some on the fence, and some very angry that I want to ruin a good reception by acting like it's the Prohibition era. I'm honestly confused here. Am I the idiot? Edit, my aunt's health comment wasn't about beer, it was about wine. She believes a glass a day is important for maintaining health, and she drinks at least one glass every single day. She's also hopped on the intermittent fasting trend, so I take her health advice with a grain of salt.
Also, a cash bar would invariably make this situation worse. My relatives expect me to provide alcohol for free. If I tell them they have to pay, they will complain more. One of my uncles was arrested last year because the price of his favorite brand of beer went up and he stole his next 12-pack because he deserved it after how much money he gave to that company. He still thinks the cops in the store were in the wrong. I love that your aunt thinks beer is healthier than lemonade. Her full of sugar argument against lemonade and soda doesn't make sense either. Alcohol is full of sugar too. And that God's preference is that you get married in a church and then pay for everyone to get wasted after. Not the idiot, the wedding will be better off without her. You are the idiot. On what high horse do you feel the need to be responsible for other adults' consumption? I don't drink much at all, but I wouldn't go to a dry wedding. Or if I did, I'd go to the ceremony and meal, then leave with half the other guests to a local bar and have an actual party. I wouldn't bring my kids to a wedding sober or not. Why subject a child to what are several hours of torture for them? Your wedding sounds awful to me, so I'm on your aunt's side, but I'll defend your right to make that choice. I went to a dry wedding where the church parking lot was next to a house having a barbecue. Started off with a few uncles splitting a 12-pack in their truck, having small talk with the neighbor, and before you knew it, half the reception was dancing on their driveway, eating carne asada, and partying with some random old Mexican man and his family. Big ouch for the bride on that one. My husband, 30, and I, 24 female, were invited to our friend's wedding on Saturday. It was a child-free wedding and our daughter, toddler, had to stay home. We were fine with it and asked my mom to look after her. She said yes, but my sister broke her foot and she had to go help her while she recovered. My husband wanted his sister to babysit instead, but I immediately said no because the last time she did, we came home to our daughter crying in our neighbor's arms while my sister went to see a movie with her boyfriend. Apparently, my sister-in-law had knocked on their door and left them our daughter without any explanation. Thankfully, we have nice neighbors and they took her in. Since then, I've refused to let my sister-in-law look after our daughter, but my husband said I should make an exception for our friend's wedding. But I don't want to because we'll be three hours away and I'm scared something's going to happen while we're not there. I suggested a babysitter and said I'd pay for it if it was necessary, but my husband refused to let a stranger look after our kid and still insisted I let my sister-in-law do it. I stayed in my position and my husband in his and he texted our friend that we won't be there. He's been passive-aggressive since and only answers with sarcasm. Am I the idiot for causing us to cancel going to the wedding? Edit, neighbors can't babysit, they moved out a month ago and we don't have their numbers. Not the idiot. Sister-in-law is not a reliable person to leave your child with. A babysitter paid by you is a good option, but I wonder why you or your husband couldn't go alone to the wedding though. It's starting to sound like you have a husband problem. Sister-in-law is definitely not a person to ever watch your child again, but your husband didn't accept any compromise, so what are you supposed to do apart from cancel? Right. I'm mad I can't go to the wedding. You can totally go. No, that's not what I meant. But honestly, this was a husband's problem the moment he didn't immediately cut off his sister when she abandoned his child with a stranger to go watch a movie. Why is your husband so willing to leave your toddler with someone who has already proven they're untrustworthy and unreliable? This is my hill to die on and I would be rethinking our relationship. The answer is probably the same as why the sister was so willing to drop the baby on the neighbors so she could go to the movies. Selfish and entitled. I want what I want when I want it. Same reason he's mad about missing the wedding. Who cares about the kid? I want to go have fun. Also, it isn't you cancelling. Your husband is putting his foot down and trying to manipulate you into giving him what he wants. I, nearly adult, non-binary, live 50-50 with my mom and my dad's stepmom. I recently asked my stepmom to drive me to the drugstore to buy hair dye. I don't have a license. She said yes, and when we got there, I picked out some silver hair dye. She got a sour look on her face and tried to convince me to go with any other color, but I said no because I wanted silver. I asked her why she was so insistent and she said that silver hair was making fun of older people. She's in her late 40s and has a fair amount of natural grey hair. She said that if I dyed my hair silver, she would take my phone until I dyed it a different colour. I told her she couldn't do that because my mom paid for my phone, not her or my dad. She said it doesn't matter because she's my parent and can discipline me however she wants. I said fine and we left without buying any hair dye. Well, a few days later, I went to my mom's house and she helped me dye my hair silver anyway. She didn't say anything about it being offensive and even said it looked great. 
The other day, I returned to my dad's house with my silver hair and my stepmom freaked out. She did try to take my phone, but my dad stopped her because, surprise, surprise, my mom pays for it and she can't just take it without talking to my mom. She huffed and called me a disrespectful spoiled brat, her exact words, because I ran to my mom to avoid the rules. My dad later asked me in private to dye my hair a different color to keep the peace and even said he would pay for the dye if I just let my stepmom think she won. I said no and threatened to stay with my mom full time if she tried to punish me for my hair. My dad called me stubborn. They're both being cold to me and now I'm wondering if I really am being entitled. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Stick to your guns. They can make rules about their house, not about your body or what you choose to do with it. Sounds like the stepmom is projecting her insecurities about getting older onto you and dad wants to keep getting laid. Yep, she is obviously sour grapes about getting older. I vote to stay with your mom full time. Stepmom is on a power trip and your dad is enabling her. This will keep happening until you leave. Just so you know, my mom who's 69 and whose hair is 100% naturally light grey loves this young people dyeing their hair silver trend. It makes her feel proud of her own hair.